today we are all the way here in Nagano at Tanaka-san's shop and I'm going to be helping Okachan set up a link for the very first time on one of his customers cars and this is a kind of a special car it's an S14 with a full rocket bunny kind of Datsun sunny front end looks really really cool so anyways we're gonna get started get a little bit of a, a look around and uh, go from there so we are currently inside Tanaka-san's shop which is called TM Labo and you probably see TM Labo on a lot of cars competing in Formula Drift Japan as well as D1. Um, we've already obviously gotten started on the link install which is going really smoothly but let me show you his logo and you'll probably remember this. This, this here, TM Labo. And uh, this is his shop, this is what he does. He pretty much does a whole bunch of really cool uh, Link ECU, Helltech ECU, so like new technology stuff here in Japan. He's probably one of the biggest, like, I would say tuners and stuff here in Japan that does all the new technology stuff. You can see that he's got a whole bunch of wiring and stuff there. He makes his own like mil spec harnesses and stuff like that. You can see them on the floor he's been working on. This is actually a really cool, oh man, I haven't seen one of these in a long time cool manifold there um, he does a bunch of 2jz builds like massive high horsepower stuff like you can see there's one freshly just been put together here in plastic got a do luck um, reinforced uh, what do you call that like a girdle plate there this like he does a lot of really cool builds shops kind of small it's actually about the same size as my shop roughly um, but he does a lot of really cool stuff in here. his own fabrication and everything we'll maybe get like a little bit of a walkthrough with him later on we're gonna go get some lunch right now but uh, it's just a really cool shop I love the layout it's kind of really unique it's got like a wash up area here and a bunch of fab parts and yeah it's good to see like a shop like this in Japan so dedicated to like all the stuff that I'm used to in Australia in the States right so it's kind of nice but yeah, a whole bunch of uh, really cool fab stuff over here. He's got a lathe, brand spanking new Panasonic. Uh, wait, huh, so that the TIG's on the bottom and that's the MIG on the top. Very cool looking MIG. Anyways, yeah, you can see a lot of 2JZ parts and cool builds, and but we'll check that out later. For now, we're gonna go get some lunch because we're in Nagoya, uh, Nagano, sorry. I keep getting that mixed up. We're probably gonna go eat some soba or something. And this is what we're getting for lunch. Epic soba. <laughs> Look at all of this. Oh man, cannot wait. Obviously we're here with Okachan, Tanaka-san and Kazuma-san. It's gonna be a good feed. Just finished eating at this lovely uh, soba restaurant, but like how beautiful is this view? You can see snow up there and through over there is Hakuba. Really uh, famous ski resort here in Japan. Time to head back to the shop, let's go. Blows my mind these automatic doors, I love them. I was just working under the car, we've got the wideband sensor installed and I've run the wire all the way along the, I guess the charcoal canister vent tube um, that goes along there and right now Tanaka-san is, uh, well I was trying at first to get the hole poked through the uh, wiring loom uh, like rubber seal but for some reason it wasn't going through so he's taking a look at it and he reckons as well that there's something weird going on there because normally it's like super easy you just kind of just stick a screwdriver through there and then you can run your wires through there but we can't get yeah he just said it nothing's going in so like normally on the s chassis they have this kind of like uh, resin on the inside of it like this if you look at this harness here you can kind of see on the inside there's like a, a bit of resin there but normally goes right through that so it's really weird so, we do know there's an S15 harness though in this um, S14 and then like the the wiring loom's been run really really weird like over the top of the radiator and stuff. So we suspect that maybe something funky's going on in there. But uh, we'll keep working away at it and uh, um, I'm gonna work on some more wiring stuff on the inside. So I just had to pull out the dash uh, to do some wiring, get a 12 volt source on ignition for the Lambda kit. While I was in there, I didn't know about this in S14s, but this is like a business card holder. I, I don't remember seeing this in S14s in Australia, so maybe this is a Japanese only thing, I'm not sure. It was really cool. 
I think it's probably more for like ETC cards and stuff back in the day because back in the day you used to have a card to pay tolls and you didn't have the, like the machine in here um, that just would auto charge the card. So I think that's what it was initially for or meant for here in Japan. But also business cards is a very high possibility too because everything operates like with business cards or meshi is the word here in Japan. Anyways, that's all back together now. A few more screws, put all this back together. And then I got to wire in the CAN bus for the Lambda, which is this lovely uh, twisted shielded wire here. Um, and then I also have to hook up the dash and this thing is ready to roll. So I'm now finished with all the wiring down here. Everything's pretty much ready to go. We just need to run the vacuum line for the map sensor that's built into the ECU. Um, but something I wanted to show you guys is a very common mod that we do on SRs now, especially when using an aftermarket ECU. This is the old wheel that we just removed from the crank angle sensor. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up too well. Let's see if we can focus on it. See all the little kind of dots? Like that? Compared to this one, which has much bigger holes in there. So we changed it to the AEM wheel, and that means that at a high RPM, you're gonna have pretty much no problems with any uh, uh, interference or problems. Sorry, I'm distracted because these guys were like making fun of me the whole time. Um, but yeah, you won't have any issues at high RPM with misfires or any of the other issues that the Nissan um, trigger wheels have because it's an optical sensor right and when it's so fine holes like that it starts when there's heavy vibration and high rpms it starts misreading that and giving a lot of errors so that solves that problem going to the bigger hole you just set it in the link ecu and you're good to go finished wiring everything the only thing i haven't done is the digital dash we'll do that at a later date not a big fuss uh, right now tanaka-san is uh, teaching okachan how to navigate the software this is also kazuma yasuyuki as well um, okachan's kind of squatting down behind you can kind of see him in there um, but yeah obviously these guys know exactly what they're doing when it comes to tuning the engine making power and making them perform um, it's just the link software navigating it is so different to what they're used to doing with EEPROM flashing little chips in the uh, uh, stock factory ECUs so this is a huge learning curve for them so uh, that's pretty much why we're here because Tanaka-san speaks amazing Japanese understands link so he's able to teach them that aspect um, and I was going through and showing them how to wire in the sensors and everything with Tanaka-san's help again and uh, obviously like I was going to do my best to teach Okachan, but I thought it was best we would come here because my Japanese when it comes to technical stuff is not good whatsoever I mean it's barely good at all um, in general use but um, yeah I'm really excited because these three guys are kind of like the holy trinity of tuning here in Japan you've got Okachan and um, Kazuma-san who like have been tuning since the get-go in the early days in the golden era and then you've got um, Tanaka-san who is pretty much the number one tuner here in Japan when it comes to like formula uh, drift cars D1 GP cars he's tunes like all the Daigo Saito stuff so it goes without saying. So anyways, it's just cool to be a part of this and be helping these guys get amongst some new technology like this. I'm really excited for what Okachan's is going to do on his own car when we get that set up. But uh, pretty much... Oh! Hi! So they're testing this right now. It's working. You can hear that clicking noise. Which means solenoid is working. So we've got boost control, baby. Yee yee! I'm pumped. Time for a quick vending machine run getting cold and I want a hot drink so <sighs> getting drinks for everyone Okachan wanted green tea red here means hot blue means cold and then what did everyone else want he wanted a black coffee let's see is there anything else any other good brands here yeah no nah, we'll just go with uh, mm, oh this is hard yeah, I think uh, I think the Boss Black is probably the best one, so we'll go with this machine for that. And I'll get a Wanda Premium. They're actually pretty good. These are really good, actually. All right, one black for this guy. Wanda Premium for me. We good. I love this about Japan like sorry I'm tr I'm having trouble speaking because I'm kind of shivering right now it's so cold here in Nagano I was not expecting it to be this cold but at the same time once I got here I was like oh of course this is where Hakuba is so 
dropping coffees. Oh, I could turn green tea. Oh wow, burning my hand on these cans. Lovely, that's how hot they come out sometimes. Or it's just how freezing cold my hands are, they're numb. Oh, we'll get inside and I'll do a some coffee time for you lads. Tanaka-san, boss black. No problem. <laughs> Kills get that. <laughs> and then we got mine here too. Don't worry, this particular heater, the hot, the top doesn't heat up. <laughs> That's how hot it is, he's burning his hand. <laughs> hey, some coffee time, lads. Let's get amongst this. Ooh, no uh, hissing sound. <sighs> so good. You see the steam rising off the top of this? So hot. Love it. Here we go. First start. Let's see. Well, oh, battery's dead. <laughs> this is the problem with this car, too. There's like a drain somewhere. Look how many batteries we've got in the back. <laughs> so we had a few issues. Um, the previous shop that worked on this car, I think at some point this used to be an auto, but there's like an S15 harness in here with an NA block with that's then got turbo pistons and rods. It's a bit of a Frankenstein. But at some point in the future, uh, sorry, in the past, they just cut all the wire, a bunch of wires here. So the wire for like uh, the NVCS, the VCT solenoid, wasn't even pinned into the ECU. It was cut. So we had to find all this stuff and repin it. And oh, it was a nightmare. So it's gotten even later now. But uh, we'll get this thing started. I'm so pumped. Spent like the last hour just going through all the software with everyone. <sighs> Ready to hear this thing come to life. Here we go. First start. <laughs> That's Link for you. All right, now we gotta kinda dial everything in. She's idling a bit weird, but we'll get that all sorted out. That's straight away off the new wheel and everything. So good. This thing is idling so smooth right now. Tanaka san is just explaining some more stuff, but everything I've wired in is working. We've got the live Lambda kit, and that's like super fast live data. Um, it is hunting a tiny bit, like you can see the AFRs there, but that's just because we haven't like dialed in the idle air control valve or anything like that. Uh, but this thing is running so good, the best it's ever run. And uh, it's just base, base like map that comes from Link. We've made a few changes for the extra sensors we've added and stuff. And this thing's idling at around 850 RPM and it's idling at around 15 AFR. So pretty much, you don't mind, like it, it's okay for the car to be idling pretty like lean. That's like a really, like that's totally fine. Obviously if you're under load, you don't want to be lean. Idling at lean is good. It's actually kind of preferred. Anyways, uh, they'll adjust that and get everything working, but things are going pretty well here. Hopefully we might be able to take this thing for a little drive soon. All right, bringing this thing out, loading her up on the truck. We got a bunch of stuff to do. Next few days, Okachan's gonna be playing around, getting this thing sorted out. I'll probably visit him again and uh, we'll help with uh, the dash install and a few customizations and a couple more sensors, but it's all like I can't get over the base map that Link provides with their stuff is so good. You're able to do so much with it. I'm so pumped and hyped for what this means for Okachan. Like all the stuff that uh, Tanaka-san was explaining to him that I've been trying to tell him about for years, he's mind blown with all the settings you can do. Get this thing loaded up and then uh, we'll be on the road and I'll give you guys an update. <laughs> the camera doesn't do it justice, but the pink LED strips that Okachan added to the truck really give it this really nice glow. I love it. Oh, it's so cold. Samui. Just stopped at this random PA for ramen and fried rice for dinner. And I bought these huge apples. Look at the size of those suckers. Can't wait to eat those later. Anyways, we're gonna get back on the road in a little bit. Pick things up from there. Just made it back to Yashio factory and it is cold out. My IATs right now at two degrees, boosting weather. Too bad my ring lens or piston rings are gone. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head home. It's just about to hit 11, so I'll probably get home around midnight, which isn't too bad. It's gonna be a little bit of a late night, but nowhere near as bad as it could have been. 
so uh, I ended up taking over driving for the truck too that's why I didn't really film much on the way home Okachan was exhausted and he started uh, getting really sleepy so I didn't want him to fall asleep behind the wheel so I drove the truck the rest of the way home all right I'm gonna pick things up once we get home but today's been very hectic a lot of things happening it's a bit hard to film if I was to be honest because obviously I had to work a whole bunch it was kind of like uh, like I was uh, working for Okachan all day it was kind of fun brings back memories of when I was working on the S15 with him but anyways I'll pick things up once we get home just got home and to say I am exhausted would be an understatement today was a big one for me um, obviously to avoid traffic first thing in the morning I went to Yashiro factory at around 5 in the morning then slept in the skyline in a sleeping bag <laughs> Um, until it was about 8 o'clock then got up we drove all the way to Nagano we I spent like ridiculous time just like it was hard to film because I was like teaching Okachan and, and Kazuma-san and everything like the wiring and how it all works and uh, alongside with Tanaka-san so like there was a lot of like backwards and forwards and like it wasn't like I could just focus on the job and get it done and then as well I was trying to film at the same time so man it was very very kind of just draining I guess so link is installed <clears throat> and uh, everything went pretty smoothly. We found a bunch of issues with that car from whoever previously worked on it and messed up that wiring harness. Like I said, there was just random cut wires and pins removed from the ECU harness. It was really weird. Um, but we got it all working in the end and uh, things just went over time crazy. So by the end of it, I'm really excited because every like, like Okajan is so pumped about using Link now. Um, it's amazing like and I knew like he was always going to be about it It was just I needed to find someone who could explain all the benefits and all that stuff and like really good Japanese to him So I'm really excited about what that's going to lead to with his personal cars You know time attack and things like that as well as drifting like he can really start to like play around in areas that he hasn't really previously been able to with the limitations of the factory ECU and the HKS uh, FCOM pros and stuff like that. So it's just really, really exciting because the way that he gets, what he does with the factory OEM ECU is insane. Like you guys watch me drift my S15, that thing comes up to 8,000 RPM multiple times never lost a rocker arm uh, I don't run rocker stoppers or anything like that um, it's just the way that he's he does it it works I don't know how or why I mean there's a few things we do as well internally with the head with springs and all that kind of stuff and the valve train um, but that aside still it's very unheard of for SRs to um, like touching 8000 rpm as much as I touch it so yeah I don't know it's, I, I'm just really excited to see where this goes. I think it's progress and uh, I don't know, there's something cool about being a part of teaching these guys something new, but then also me feeling super humbled because there's just so much that I can learn from them, if that makes sense. So um, it was a weird feeling today and being able to hang out with those three guys was definitely, it's, I really do have to pinch myself sometimes and be like, this is a dream, am I going to wake up? Like, I never, ever would have thought that I would have sat down at a table today and had lunch with Okachan, Kazuma, and Tanaka-san all at the same time. It's it's crazy. And, like, to even be able to start to call them my friends and stuff, it's, it's weird. It really is. Anyways, guys, I'm just having a real kind of crazy moment right now I guess I don't know it's it's mind-blowing where I'm at right now but anyways guys I really hope you enjoyed today's video smash that like button rise the comment and subscribe let me remind you I'm only here because of you guys I would not be able to do what I'm doing today if it wasn't for you guys watching my content every day so thank you so much tomorrow we're getting back to shop stuff we're gonna work on those floors again um, I think I'm going to start uh, filling in the holes and leveling out some of the places and stuff with uh, some self-leveling leveling concrete tomorrow. At least that's my plan. Hopefully the home setters have that stuff. With that, see you in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Jamata.